That's Kobe Albrighi. Fights out of Hyattsville, Maryland, nearby. Originally from Barbados, so that's how he entered the ring. Not sure if that's new headgear or he's in disguise for his opponent against Fernando Fuentes. And the tail of the tape, Reedy, the more impressive record, undefeated four knockouts. But you look, Fuentes has the age advantage, a little bit of a height advantage, also the reach advantage. We'll see if he has the advantage in this featherweight bout scheduled for eight rounds. We're ready to go live here on FS1 to a ring announcer in Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to MGM National Harbor for PBC on FS1. Sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. We now have eight rounds. This in the featherweight division. The three judges scoring this contest will be John Gradowski, Larry Hazard Jr., and Paul Wallace. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds is David Braslow. Introducing first, fighting to my left out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the red trunks trimmed with the gold. Weighing in officially at 125 and one quarter pounds with the record 14 wins, seven losses, one draw, four wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Hemet's California. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Fernando Chuquito Fuentes. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the camouflage trunks, weighing in officially at 125 and one half pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated. A dozen wins for those coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Bridgetown of Barbados. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Kobayo Breedy. Gentlemen, you're given the rules in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck. Scheduled for eight rounds. Bree at the age of 27. He turned pro just a few days after his 23rd birthday. As a younger brother who boxes, Jabali Bree, listed as a uh, southpaw lefty. And there's a look at Fernando. Fuentes, ringside live, PBC on FS1. Nice to have you with us. Alongside Ray Mancini, Jared Hurd, we have Marcos Villegas, our unofficial scorer, Jordan Hardy, our reporter. You just heard from Ray Flores. Fuentes in the red trucks with the gold yellow stripes. Fast hands, he's a fucking, uh, he's training very well. Southpaw, so you can see he has no fast hands. Nice fight. Fernando Fuentes, who's squaring up with him. And as you know, Jerry, when you square up with a southpaw, he hits you with that straight left hand. It's easy punch for you to go down. Yeah, most definitely. You want to stay at an angle when you're fighting southpaws. Squaring up, and it, 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 it lines you up for, for um, the strong power hand for straight shots. So you would like to stay. Um, do you, uh, do you like fighting southpaws, or would you rather not? I don't think anyone likes fighting southpaws. Why is that? Is it the footwork, the way the foot gets in the way, or is it just that you... Because not all southpaws are necessarily... That's not The, the left punch is not necessarily always their power punch. Well, what I think it is, I think it's, it's not what you're used to. Everything's the opposite. You're rolling the opposite way. You're stepping the opposite way. And uh, I think that gives everyone trouble. Absolutely, Chris. It's a, it's a very disciplined fight. Okay. you gotta, you got to train for that specifically to prove the right way. Keep your left foot outside the right foot. And everyone thinks it's the right hand against the side of the ball. Chris, it's the left hook. It's the left hand. It comes, it's the left hook comes from the blind side. And Brady aggressive in that last exchange here in the opening round. Nothing on that right from Fuentes. Stop, stop. The referee did Braswell sorting them out. Well, I like what I'm seeing also, go, both guys are working behind a jab. Uh, you know, when you see a right-handed fighter fighting a south pole, guys often get away from the jab because both lead hands are in front of each other. And uh, these guys are working behind the jab. But you know, it's funny you said that, Jared. I tell people, the south pole can tap you with a jab. You've got to tap him with the jab, just like you said. But you don't go for the chin. You shoot for his shoulder, right shoulder. 
to knock him off balance. Well, if you can touch that shoulder, you can then you drop the right hand. If you can't touch it with the left, you have no business pulling that right hand. And Brady landing more punches in this opening round. You know, sometimes you see Brady in there switching back. Stop! 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 A lot of clenching going on here. Keep it clean, guys. Let's go. Keep it clean, says uh, referee. Inside of 10 seconds here, the right misses by Breedy. Out of a jump from Fuentes. Round one, complete. You're watching PBC Live on FS1. Breedy the aggressor and punches thrown is one thing, punches landed and then the effectiveness of, of those punches. And there's a look at Fuentes, who seemed like he was on the defensive much of that opening round. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, it's a filling out round, you know, the first round. Some guys are sometimes be defensive, some come out blasting, but these guys, they were kind of filling each other out. And, uh, yeah, Ray, what did you see from Brady that you liked? He seemed to be able to uh, at least lead in this. Yeah, Chris, he's got good hand speed, good footwork. He's, you know, he's switching up and back and forth, which I, I'm not a fan of because it shows usually the fighter doesn't know what he wants to do. Just stick with, 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 with what you are and just work at it. So he's a southpaw. Just keep working from behind the southpaw. It was confusing what they most of the round. The right that lands to the face of Fuentes. And the landed punches nearly three to one in favor of Brady already. So he really scores for right handers right there. He's reaching with his punches. Yeah, that left that by landed to the chest of Fuentes by Brady, and now he's got him on the ropes. And Fuentes leans in. He's reaching with his punches, leaving himself vulnerable. Yeah, he's fighting from the, the right-handed style now. <laughs> what I like what he's doing though, he's not just going in there standing straight up. He's kind of moving his head side to side stop, before stop, he steps in. You have to like the aggressiveness of Brady from the start, dancing around with the camouflage trunks. Left just above the belt from Fuentes. He goes with another body shot. Well, you know, Chris, both guys are both uh, a little unorthodox. Both guys are, uh, uh, you know, you got to watch. You know, they're both throwing face coming from weird angles. Somebody's going to get caught with something if they, if they don't get back to the you know, their regular style. Some good body work here. Good yeah, exchange. They're good working exchange. hard. So when Brady stays in the pocket, it makes it easier for Fuentes. When he gives a movement, it's, it's better for Brady. Because so Fuentes don't like movement. Nice left by Fuentes to the side of the face. There's another little shot he got in on Brady. Both guys are landing great body shots. And, and what I like about these guys, they're going to the body early. And, and, and that helps out when you get to the later rounds. You know, these guys are, are putting in their, the, the, the body work in now, and uh, it's going to pay dividends later on. Greater disparity in those punches landed, but scheduled for eight. We're only in round two here. Now watch Brady, he's also jumping in. Both guys are jumping in with punches. Watch the clash of heads. You mean like a headbutt, an early headbutt, correct, accidental correct. or not? Okay. Yes, correct. I try to say, I like Brady when he's working on the southpaw. It was more fluid. And inside of 10 seconds. Brady looking like the quicker of the two. Aggressive at the end of the round by Fuentes. But Kamaya Brady, an aggressive left. He's landed more punches so far. Fight Night National Harbor here. It's the PBC on FS1. Seconds out. All right, wait that water up, guys. Fuentes in the opening rounds challenged aggressively by Brady. And I'm sure you're watching at home, well, whichever way you're leaning, whoever you're rooting for, Brady, based on what we've seen, has to have the first two rounds, or at least you would think that, based on what the judges are seeing. Punches landed, a great indicator. 
what I noticed in between rounds, both fighters uh, like to the stand. They don't take a seat to see. Right? Was that something that you yeah. thought that <laughs> helped out? Sure, let me trust. Let me tell you something. When you're in the pros, you sit down, rest your legs. That's an old amateur trick. You know what? You only had to go three rounds. You sit down, you take the breather, you know, breathe easy, and then you, let you, then you get up. I, I'm a firm believer in sitting in the corner and getting that rest. Yeah. 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 Good body shots here and sweat flag between Fuentes and Breedy. Now, Chris, it, since the first round, Breedy has stayed as an orthodox fighter. And when I thought it was very effective as a southpaw, he stayed with the orthodox stance. And it's worked to his advantage. The difference is when he's a southpaw, he kept his left hand up around his chin. When he's fighting as an orthodox, his hands are all over. His, especially his right hand, it's not up around his chin. And that's when you get, get caught with a wild hook or something. You heard him, our referee, David Brazos, say, watch that head. Just something that Ray had pointed out. You don't want a headbutt impacting here in the third round. Well, Fuentes is taller than the two. I think he should uh, kind of try to stay on the outside a little more. He, he's he's kind of getting mixed up in the, in the middle of trying to make a doll fight. Good point, Jared. He's, he's also got the better reach. You would think he would be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, but he's not much of a boxer. He's, he, he, his, his feet are pretty uh, flat-footed. Flat. Pretty flat-footed throughout the fight. Breedy can make this easier for himself by giving him angles in and out. Yeah. But he stands, he's, he's going straight forward, which is making it easier for Fuentes. He's got a lot of height, a lot of reach, but that's like to fight inside. That sounds real familiar. <laughs> <laughs> there was a good body shot from Fuentes. Looks like that right grazed the left side of the face of Fuentes by Breedy. He's looking in. The right misses and a nice response. Fuentes. Maybe the most competitive round for Fuentes so far. He misses with that right. You know, Fuentes is awkward as heck, but he makes it effective. <laughs> he makes it effective when he, he faints with his head, the, and then he throws in wild punches, but he catches Breedy. into the ropes and the ref separates as Fuentes was able to land a few body shots but Breedy had an answer. Always on the Fox Sports app they raced in Martinsville Virginia today and Brad Keselowski at his Penske Ford was the winner earlier today. NASCAR and FS1 and it's PBC on FS1. Round four and Breedy Hasn't scored a knockout since his fifth career fight. That was back in 2016. Ahead in this fight, the way we see it, Fuentes may need a knockout. He hasn't had one in his last three wins, but he does have four in his 22 career fights. Yeah, well, neither fighter has many knockouts, but one thing we sure they're both going for tonight. So you can see the unofficial scoring of Marcus uh, Marcus Viegos, who we'll hear from next round. You kind of see that the same way, Ray and Jared. You agreeing with that? Yeah, I you do see it that way. I do see it that way. But I'm telling you right now, Breedy is playing into Fuentes' hands by standing there trying to slug with him, by standing there going toe to toe, and plays right in the hands of Fuentes because that that's when a lucky punch can get in. When you use your boxing bill, you use your hand speed, you make it easier fight for yourself. And Breedy was doing that early on. What do you do, Jared, when you have a, an unorthodox, you talked about a southpaw, but just somebody who's a little different uh, fighter. Yeah, by, the, by this time, the fight, third, fourth round, would you have adjusted? Uh, yeah, you know, I start off a little slow, but, you know, with me, if the guy's unorthodox and where, you know, uh, you kind of, with me, step back and kind of figure out what you need to do instead of just going in there, taking chances and uh, fighting off uh, instant. And, um, you know, that's why I feel like Fuentes is going there's a right that lands to the side of the face. Good right from Reedy. They're going at it. Yeah, it's a great fight, but, it's, but sometimes you're a little too, you're too, uh, you know, too much hard for your own good. And that's what Pretty right now is showing a lot of hard standing there, being aggressive, but it's not the most effective way to fight Fuentes. But maybe Ray, he's thinking this is only scheduled for eight rounds. 
I've got the energy for it. Well, if it was a four-rounder, I get it. Eight runs, you got plenty of time to figure them out, break them down, and, and use your, your boxing ability to make a clear decision. Or knock them out. Four knockouts for Breedy in his 12 wins against no losses, no ties. He's been the aggressor. Looked like that landed on the face of Breedy. Who's, this is his first scheduled eight-round fight. So he has not been the distance in that area. And Fuentes is coming off a layoff at, of over 280 days. That's a career-long layoff for Fuentes, who got nothing with that left, and now they tangle in the ropes. It's a wide stance for Brady. The theater at National Harbor, Maryland, just down the road from our nation's capital. Brady from Barbados at age 27, working out of Maryland now, calling Maryland home. And from Hemet, California, Fuentes undefeated in his last eight fights, but behind in this one the way we see it. Bring in Marcos Villegos, who, excuse me, Villegas, who has Breedy well in control of this fight. Uh, Marcos, uh, tell us why you're scoring it the way you are so far. Yeah, so far I have it 39-37. Fuentes had a great last round in that round number four, uh, fighting well on the inside and using his reach, but I think overall when you take a look at the fight as a whole, uh, Breedy's landed the better punches, and what, my, what I mean by that, the cleaner punches and the punches that are doing the most damage on his opponent. Yeah, and so, Jared, if, if Fuentes did come on in that round, uh, do you see him able to continue that, or does Breedy adjust? Uh, yeah, he did have a great round um, last round, but as you can see when he came out to open the bill, he, he jumped in and lunged with a shot, and, and you know, that, that can come with confidence and because of the great last round he had. He's, he's loading up with punches now, he needs to settle down and, you know, take his time and, and go back to the body like it was. You know, I mean, he's fighting with his hands down around his waist now, and is, whether he's cocky or confident, I'm not sure yet, because this guy's throwing weird uh, punches, wild punches from the outside, and he's just missing or he's catching him on the side of the head. Yep. Only takes a little bit closer to tap that chin. And let's see what happens. Fuentes did get a left in on the chin of Breedy, but then Breedy responded with a right that seemed to miss. Fuentes is, 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 is he's jumping and lunging on the shot. You, you, you want to you know you know you know look at when I see this? This is the type of, I'm sure that that Fuentes gets the type of, this type of sparring in the gyms where he trains all the time because you always have rough fights. You know, the, the, the Latino fighters love to make wars in the gym. I'm not sure Breedy gets this type of work. And I'm telling you what, he better, he better, this guy's making it a war, making it an ugly fight, which plays into Fuentes' hands, making plays into his hands. Breedy's got to go back to being what he did in the first couple of rounds, being a stylist. You know, using that jab, hooking off that jab, and go back to a southpaw stance, I think. Saw a little shuffle there. Got nothing on the left, and Fuentes got the best of that on the back end. Feel like I am watching a sparring session. It has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, man. A little cut on the nose of Fuentes. Starting to bleed in that area. Fuentes is making this an ugly fight. And that plays right in those hands. He wants to make it rough, tough, make it ugly. Then you, then you know what? The judge off to decide. It plays right into his hands. Pretty really, the first couple rounds, was doing well when he was being a stylist. Now he's trying to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There's a right landed by Brady. Shot. People can hear it in the fourth row. Yeah, looks like that may have had an effect. A right and a response from Brady after the left got nothing for Fuentes. Let's check in with Jordan Hardy. Jordan? Chris, thank you. So I was over in Brady's corner and his trainer Floyd C Seymour was telling me that he does not want Brady to wait to the last minute of the round to turn things up and just try to steal the round. He was reminding him that this is easy work for him or it should be and then he's just overthinking. He also wants him to try to catch Fuentes uh, as he's lunging in with an uppercut. So we'll see if he implements that going into this round. Chris? Something thank you, Jordan, that you were pointing out, leaving himself open when he's lunging. Wait for the right shot, take advantage of it. 
So Ray, if you're if you're in that corner, oh three, do you feel like okay? Even though Fuentes has had a little bit of a rally there in the previous round, you you've got this fight under control. Yes, go out there, box smart. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep moving your hands, but box smart and go back to your southpaw stance. And, and Fuentes not an easy guy to knock out. It was the first fight of his career. That was the only time that he was KO'd, even though he has seven defeats. Fuentes suffered a cut over the bridge's nose in that last round. Worked on it in his corners, sweat flying, and there's a little bit of blood mixed in with that. Dripping. I see it really when he sees blood, he gets, he gets me. <laughs> like, like a shark of the water. Yeah. Another thing Brady's doing, when he's shooting that right hand, he's leaving his left hand out. And I've seen a few times. Oh, flash it. Okay, well, you guys pointed that out early that we might see that. And that's in the area. They're checking the, the nose, the blood. And you see that comes from the lunge. A lot of lunging coming from um, Fuentes and, 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 and they call us a clash of so, so a headbutt here. Both guys, both guys. Both lunging, Ooh. yep. Ooh. And we're under unified rules here in Maryland. As you get a close-up look at the blood dripping from the nose and face area of Fuentes. And that's it. Only the, well, a doctor or referee can stop this fight. After completion of four rounds, they could go to the cards for a technical decision with partial round scored since we have worked past the fourth. The headbutt, the bloody nose of Fuentes and the corner of Kobaya Brady trying to stay perfect, trying to improve his record to 13 and 0. Go to the ring, get the official decision here in just a moment after the headbutt brought an end to this. Our first fight of the night, Breedy and Fuentes with Jared Hurd, Ray Mancini. Some of the highlights we observed as Breedy was the aggressor early, set the tone, got ahead on landed punches. Yeah, both guys being aggressive, and you can see their lunging right there, their heads almost clash, and that is shame. Yeah, see, that was good body work by Fuentes to the body of Breedy, and eventually their heads did clash. Fuentes came on through the third and fourth rounds here in round five. There, were, there was a lot of action throughout. There's the blood on the nose, a headbutt followed here in the sixth. And boom, there's a clash of heads. Uh, Free dance suffered a nasty cut over the eye. So let's go to the ring for the official call at Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge on advice of the ringside physicians has deemed Fernando Fuentes unable to continue due to an accidental clash of heads. We now go to the scorecards. Judge at ringside Larry Hazard Jr. scores at 59-55 and judges John Grodowski and Paul Wallace have it 58-56 for your winner by technical unanimous decision. Kobaya Brady! Well, maybe, maybe Brady had something in mind when he came out with the gas mask and headgear. He, they probably could have used that, although it worked in his favor <laughs> as uh, he improves to 13 and 0. And in the ring with him is our Jordan Hardy. Chris, thank you. So did you feel that, that clash of heads and did you feel like it, did it affect you at all? No, no, not at all. Uh, it just happened and I just looked up at him and he was bleeding. But at the meantime, while I was going through the bar, I was, listen, my coach, he said, my corner was saying hit him with a stick and a knife to the body. So that's why I kept doing That's why we clashed heads and, and me extra and excuse what my coach was trying to tell me. Fuentes' style seemed a little awkward. Did it, did it take you longer than expected, longer than you expected it to, to get adjusted? Nah, because I've been training with Barry Hunter and Headbangers and stuff. Um, before I even get to that, first of all, I want to give a shout out. I want to give thanks to God for giving me this opportunity. I want to give a shout out to my Barbados people, uh, people in the DMV, um, my people. Um, I'm trying to get Rihanna to bring me to the ring. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> and, my, and my coach, um, his wife, 
um, my, my, um, and my wife, and my beautiful family, everybody that came out and support me. I want to give a thanks. And first of all, I want to give a shout out to this man right here. Had bangers, baby. I uh, had bangers and Barry Hunter and um, uh, all the rest of the team. And this <laughs> man right here sitting standing right next to me, he made it all happen. He believed in me since the 2010 when I was in a World Games. And, and, and yeah, now we're here.